Hello? Hello? Welcome to my channel. I know I didn't post last week, but this week I have a really interesting video. I want to try making more sit-down videos where I talk about social issues and the media. So if you want me to make more of these videos, give this video a like and subscribe down below. And let's get started. The male gaze is a feminist concept referring to the way visual arts view the world from a masculine perspective. Coined by film critic Laura Mulvey in 1975, the concept is described as the tendency of visual artists to portray society from a primarily male point of view. According to many feminist theorists, the male gaze commonly comes into play when depicting women. Basically, filming women as if they are sexual objects. So there's a few ways where this manifests in films. One is when the camera is showing different body parts of women instead of showing the whole person. Another one is making women look like spectacles by making the shot really aesthetic but not adding to the plot. A lot of times the music will also pause and create a dramatic effect. The third one is when women become too powerful in films. They are fetishized so that it will become more reassuring and less threatening for the male protagonist. And this you can see in movies that feature female heroes. This idea of the male gaze was popularized by Laura Mulvey's essay called The Visual Pleasure in Narrative Cinema. By the way, if I'm looking down, I'm looking at my notes. The male gaze was so influential that not only was it just a film critique, it is now a feminist theory. So one huge idea that was brought up was scopophilia. Did I say that right? Scopophilia. And in the essay, she writes that there are two types, one being voyeuristic scopophilia, which is the idea that you see yourself as a subject and whatever is on screen, you see it as the object because you want to gain a sense of power. The other type is narcissistic scopophilia, which is where you identify with the characters. So when these two types of scopophilia come into play, we start identifying with the narrative frame or the male protagonists who are objectifying women. And because of how realistic and immersive films can be, we are also objectifying women. The immersive experience can be explained by the fourth wall, and it's called the fourth wall because basically what we see on the screen is a story with characters and we see three walls in front of us and we feel like there's a fourth wall behind us, including us into the story. In this case, it is very natural that the camera's perspective will become our perspective. And when this happens, it kind of transcends into the way we see ourselves and other people. It can make objectifying women seem like a natural thing to do. There's a quote in the essay that kind of sums up this phenomenon, which is, it faces us with the ultimate challenge, how to fight the unconscious structured like a language while still caught within the language of the patriarchy. Essentially, the male gaze is not just found in films. It clouds our judgment and our self-image as long as we still live in a patriarchal society. For me, my first experience with the male gaze is probably more literally. I remember when I was a kid in the subway, maybe I was like 10 years old or something, men in their 20s or 30s would stare at me and it's just really weird and it made me feel really self-conscious and I felt like I was in danger. But I think as I grew older and started caring more about how I looked, I also started caring about how men would see me. You know, nowadays, everyone wants to be a main character. It's something that's seen as desirable. But what we see as main character, at least for females, is a lot of times we imagine ourselves walking into this public area and guys just staring at us. But really that's just seeing ourselves as the love interest of men, which then doesn't really make us main characters. It's also weird that I even care about men's attention so much because I identify as bisexual, but frankly, I don't care about women's attention nearly as much as men's. Which segues into my second point, which is that the male gaze has a influence on compulsory heterosexuality. Compulsory heterosexuality is basically feeling obligated to like men and be attracted to men because it's what society deems normal but when it really comes down to it you don't actually like men you just 
feel like you have to. For some people who are questioning their sexuality, that's a very real thing. Where you care about men's attention and you know, you feel validated by that. And you think about having a relationship with men, but really when it happens, that's not really what you want. And that's true for some bisexual people who are not sure if they're really bisexual or just gay. And that's not to invalidate bisexuality. It is very real. People can be bisexual, but some of us are really just confused because we literally feel obligated to like this one gender because in the media we see it so much. It's always heterosexual couples and that little representation of LGBTQ couples and the media. Um, they're either performative or over-sexualized. Like if you think about films, a lot of times when you see for example, girls kissing girls, it'll be from the male gaze. As if they're just doing it for the attention. If it's not over-sexualization, it would be performative, bisexuality, or homosexuality, which is just very uncomfortable to watch. But celebrities do that for publicity. Some celebrities have even come out saying that they were just saying they were bisexual to get attention. And that's just wrong because what you're doing is you're invalidating people who genuinely have the sexuality just for the pleasure of men. And for me, because I didn't see this representation in the media, I just kept denying it until funny story kind of is that I figured out I was bisexual or I came to terms with it when I saw a scholarship for LGBTQ plus people and I was like, hmm, I'm not going to apply for that, even though I really need the money. And then my second thought was like, but am I though? And I kind of just went into this whole circle of, am I bisexual or am I not? And yeah, it took me years and years to figure it out because I had internalized this male gaze and was afraid that I was no longer normal and guys won't like me because I like other genders. Doesn't really make any sense, but this male gaze in my head was just clouding my self-image. I also really lacked confidence, especially in high school. I looked like this in high school. I had long hair, didn't wear any makeup, and I wore teeny tiny tops. Yes, I would admit, at one point, I was one of those pick me girls. So pick me, choose me, love me. I had a superiority complex in terms of how I looked, thinking that I'm conventionally attractive because I look feminine so that I would get guys' attention. I wouldn't say I was attention-seeking, but I just didn't have the confidence to figure out my gender identity and how I wanted to dress. I thought looking natural with no makeup was such a flex, but really I just didn't know how to put on makeup and I didn't have the confidence to wear whatever I wanted. And I mean, it worked. Probably in high school, I got more male attention than I do now because I had long hair, I looked like any other girl and that made me feel normal. I felt validated even though again I shouldn't care so much. Along with the male gaze I also had internalized misogyny thinking that guys are cooler than girls. I would feel more comfortable hanging out with guys at one point just because they're guys. I thought it was cooler because of it and among other things and I was really just self-conscious because I cared so much about what other people think, especially guys. Then the turning point was when I shaved my head. This happened a year ago. And at that point, I can't say that I did it completely because I was like, fuck gender roles. That's kind of what I tried to portray, but partly I remembered I still did it because I cared about how I looked. I I mean, I still do, but I overcompensated by getting lash extensions and wearing teeny tiny tops again, thinking that I didn't want to look 
like a boy and no one would like me so i tried to dress feminine and look feminine otherwise also if you're a girl and you want to figure out your gender identity and work through your internal male gaze i honestly recommend shaving your head it has honestly helped me so much and over time i just gained the confidence to not act and look feminine if i don't want to once i was aware of this internal male gaze i just start working through it and stop caring so much and now i would say i dress pretty gender neutral you know i put on makeup but like my eyeliner for example it's pretty straight so it looks gender neutral i just wear whatever i feel like that day i don't really feel comfortable labeling my gender identity but it has just like it's so much more liberating to just act and wear whatever the fuck you want without having to listen to this inner voice in your head about what other people think because it shouldn't matter so much and yeah now i feel like when people stare at me it's because they're a little confused i think um and i probably don't get as much male attention also because it's COVID 19 i don't go out but it's so much more fun not caring about the normal gender roles that we're supposed to fit into and just figure out what you genuinely want so all i'm saying is now that you've watched this video and you know about the male gaze, how it's presented in films, and how it influences your self-perception, you can now work through it. I hope this was thought-provoking or you learned something or whatever. And if you did, give this video a like. Let me know if you want me to cover any other topics. I kind of do like doing research and just drafting a script. So yeah let me know and subscribe down below for more content like this yeah hope you enjoyed this video and i'll catch it later bye and subscribe but i mean only if, if you want to, if you want to. because